So big news, Starlink RV is available for immediate purchase. In this video, we're going to talk about six reasons why we won't be getting Starlink for RV. Hey guys, Izzy from Endless RVing, and we're just going to get right into this quick video about Starlink. Now, if you have been keeping up with Starlink, and if you don't know what Starlink is, and this is SpaceX, Elon Musk, uh, venture into internet for everyone, low orbit satellite internet for everybody. It's made to address the issues of giving high speed internet where it's not available, where either a hard cable is not available or cellular service is not available. Like I said, it was launched back in 2019. Well, very recently we received the email along with many other RVers that Starlink for RV is available for immediate purchase. So let's talk about some of the benefits of Starlink for RV. Now it's essentially very similar to Starlink for home, which has been available. However, Starlink for home has had this really long wait and availability. Some places it's over a year. Starlink for RV is available immediately. What are you going to get Starlink for RV? And for the rest of the video, I'm going to call it Starlink. Uh, so you're going to get speeds, download speeds of over 100 megabytes per second. Some people are reporting 200 plus and 20 megs or more upload speeds, which is really good. Like that is a game changer. That is high speed internet. That is streaming TV, running cameras, having Zoom calls. That is something that's really beneficial for those that are out on the road that need internet, either for their job, communications, YouTube channel, entertainment, whatever. It's a big deal. Now with the Starlink for RV, there is no waiting list. It is available immediately, which is another big deal. Starlink for RV, you can roam, right? So you have, you're going to have it sent it to one address. Say we're in New Jersey and we want to move, go out to Arizona and we want to be out in BLM land. It's going to work out there, which is an awesome thing. If you're a full-time RVer, if your job requires you to have internet, you're working remotely, this allows a lot of freedom if you're out on the RV. So as you know, we've done many videos on our internet setup. We'll link the latest one above. We currently use uh, cellular service for our internet. And we're gonna talk about some of the disadvantages for us if we were to move over to Starlink for RV. So the number one thing is going, going to be the cost. The cost for the hardware, the Starlink hardware, it's a pretty much compromise of three different things. You have the satellite dish, you have a modem, and then you have about I think it's 75 feet of cable and then you can buy more cable, 125 or, or longer. Cost of that is almost $700. That's about $691. Plus it's $135 a month for the service. Now currently the service is unlimited, uh, which is a good thing, uh, but it is a little bit pricey compared to what we pay. Uh, I'm paying about $40 a month right now for true unlimited high speed internet. Cellular does not work everywhere. We know that. However, we haven't had too many issues getting cellular signal most places we travel. We are not full timers. We are part timers. So right now it makes sense for currently what we have. We have a really nice setup on our RV. A dedicated modem like we have on our RV. Uh, it can be anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to well over a thousand dollars. But the other thing is with cellular service, if you have a hotspot on your phone, for a lot of part timers, you just flip that hotspot on and now you're using the data plan from your normal cellular service. Another disadvantage for us, and this is this one's kind of a big deal, is that currently Starlink, although it has roaming capabilities, there is no in motion capabilities. Now, what does that mean? That means right now when we're going down the road, we have a permanently mounted cellular antenna. As long as there's cellular signal in the area, whether we're going 80 miles an hour down the highway or we're stationary, as long as there's cellular signal, we're going to get internet. That is not the case right now, Starlink for RV. Now there's talk about development of some kind of dome, some kind of uh, capability where Starlink will work in motion. And if that happens now, that's for us, that might pique our interest, but currently that's not the case. Another thing for us that we, uh, when we write a little bit more into the Starlink for RV is that you're actually a second tier service. And this is from Starlink's website. Stated speeds and uninterrupted use of the service are not guaranteed. Service degradation will be most extreme in weightless areas on the Starlink availability map during peak hours. Another big issue, and this is one of the reasons we didn't get Starlink for our home, Two things. Number one, fiber optic opened up and that's really fast. So we had fiber optic run, but we're in an area with a lot of trees. And uh, when we used to have our dish before we cut cable completely, it was a big problem. Starlink needs a direct shot of the sky because it's 
pulling in from the satellites. And if you have an area that has a lot of trees, it could be an issue. If you're in a heavily dense you know, tree area, it could be an issue. There's some uh, RV YouTube channels out there that have confirmed this. They can't really use it that well if there's trees, if the signal is not good, they get interrupted service. So that was, again, a little bit of an issue for us. Now, that will affect cellular also, but we've been in areas where there's been a lot of trees and although our speeds have come down, we were still able to use internet uh, pretty effectively. Another thing we didn't like is that, you know, there is a, a setup, although it's a minimal setup, every time you get to a campsite, you have to set up your satellite you gotta go through the app. Although it's, it's not something difficult, it does take time. You gotta run cable to the modem inside your RV. It's not a permanent solution like we currently have right now. Like we pull in, there's nothing for us to do. We have a permanently mounted antenna. We have a dedicated modem. It's there, it's quick, it's easy. Another thing we don't like, and guys, we're, we're just kind of nitpicking, but we're telling you the reasons why we are not on board with Starlink right now. The hardware is exposed, you know, so you, you have that very expensive dish. It's out there now. Somebody could steal that dish. Maybe it's a brick. Maybe Starlink can shut it off, but you're not getting that hardware back. You have to replace that hardware. I'm not really a big fan of that. I would like more something permanently mounted. And then lastly, and probably the most important, this is a relatively new technology and we strongly believe that it will get better with time and it's apparently really good now, but it's been pushed out to a minimum amount of people. What, and a lot of people are getting on board. We don't like beta testing things, so we would like to see how does this service hold up when there's millions of people on the service. Is the download speeds gonna be the same? Is there gonna be more congestion? Is there gonna be more outages? As more people get on the network, that's when you're going to see any flaws being exposed. I'm sure they'll be worked out. As with everything, there's growing pains and the technology gets better, but I don't see a reason for us to pay top dollar. Um, kind, of, kind of to be beta testers at this point. With all that being said, guys, this is a great technology and it is really a, a, a next step as far as uh, internet technology. It's going to help a lot of RVers out there. We will probably be on board once that technology advances to the next level, when it's been out for a couple of years, when they have the in-motion domes, more permanent mount depending on what the price is maybe we'll get on board but who knows what cellular companies are going to do because they're not going to lie down uh, without a little bit of competition and competition is always a good thing so in the comments below let us know do you have cellular do you have starlink is it something you're looking forward to and if you do have starlink how has it been performing for you and for myself and mj we thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the road